In this video, I'm going to talk about whether you should get an iPad or a MacBook for 2D animation. You're just starting out, you're wanting to learn animation. Should you go out and buy a MacBook, a PC, computer, or should you buy an iPad uh, for 2D animation specifically? Well, a couple of years ago, I wouldn't even consider an iPad for animation, but now, with how far things have come, the answer to that question is a lot more complicated and will depend on your situation and some of the pros and cons of using an iPad versus a MacBook for animation. So let's jump into this. All right, iPad versus MacBook, or, you know, PC, iMac, whatever. Now I'm gonna probably clarify a couple times that while I'm comparing iPad versus a MacBook, I need to make sure that you understand that neither is better than the other. Well, in terms of technical performance, obviously a computer, a PC is going to be a lot better than the iPad. But for you just starting out learning animation, or maybe you're further down the road, for you, there might be something better. For you, animating might be more enjoyable here versus here. For me, I started here on a MacBook, and um, then later down the road, I transitioned to using the iPad a lot more. And now I use both, but it's 80% iPad, 20% MacBook um, using After Effects on the, uh, on the computer or on my PC. Let's first talk about some of the positives, the, the pros and reasons why you might want to start out with animating on an iPad or only ever animate on an iPad. Well, the first thing is that it is great for beginners. Most Apple devices are uh, super intuitive, but the iPad specifically, any app that comes out on the iPad, it has to be uh, user-friendly from the get-go. It's pretty difficult to get lost on the iPad. A similar uh, benefit as the first one, but it is easy and simple. One of the reasons why I love the iPad so much is the fact that it's not very complicated. It doesn't, it isn't as robust, it's not as technical, and so you can focus more on the fundamentals and your personal taste and drawing capabilities. Again, small learning curve. Basically, if you can draw, you can animate on the iPad. If you've ever made a flip book on your notebooks back in elementary school or whatever, you can animate on the iPad. It's great for GIFs and small Instagram loops. For a lot of people, that might be the only thing you ever need to do is create small Instagrammable loops. Maybe you're making GIFs for a client. Maybe you're making GIFs and putting them on Giphy for yourself and you want them available in, uh, in Instagram. For those kind of things, the iPad is perfect. Another great benefit is that it's cheaper. You can spend as little as $300 to $400 for one of the entry-level iPads and then add the $90 uh, Apple Pencil, or you can uh, branch out or um, you can splurge a little and get the iPad Pro. The iPad that I would recommend for most people right now is the newly released 2020 iPad Air. But basically, all you need to do is get an iPad that is uh, Apple Pencil compatible. The iPad that I use right now is an iPad Pro from, I believe, 2018, probably released 2017, but it is still the the uh, first generation Apple Pencil and it works great. And I'm probably gonna be using the same iPad for a few more years before I ever need to get the new iPad, even though I'm you know jealous of the, the new form factor. Last thing is it's portable. Now I'm sure some people are gonna say, well, the MacBook is portable. It's portable, you can take it places, but you don't use it in the same kind of places you can use the iPad. With the iPad, I can take it anywhere and I can still animate. Whenever I use my MacBook to animate and jump into After Effects or even use my Wacom tablet with Photoshop or Adobe Animate, I always feel like I have to be at a desk, that I'm sitting like upright in my chair at a desk, you know, I've got my keyboard, my, my mouse, and it, it just doesn't feel natural and organic. But with an iPad, it's so portable. It's just like taking a notebook and a pencil out with you. And you can basically animate in nature, animate up on a mountain. You know, it's starting to get to the place where you can create art and create animations in the places that actually inspire artists. All right. 
Now, the MacBook. Why would you start out with buying a MacBook? And what are some of the pros and cons of a MacBook? The first big pro of using a MacBook for animation is that it is a lot more robust. I mentioned that with the iPad, the iPad is a lot simpler, but the MacBook is robust. It has a lot more advanced tools and you're gonna find that you will never max out your capabilities on a MacBook. There will always be something new to learn. Uh, I've been using After Effects for over five years now and I'm constantly trying to learn new things. Next thing is displays. This isn't necessarily uh, a pro that you can't get with an iPad, but you're most likely not going to be animating on an iPad with a big 30 inch uh, monitor for your iPad. But on the computer, I gotta say, it's really awesome to be able to just have two big monitors or I have an LG widescreen monitor that I use for my MacBook. Next, processing power. I mentioned that on the iPad it's better for short form content. A lot of that has to do with the fact that the MacBook just has more processing power. Part of it is the software is built better for longer form content, but the, the processing power doesn't just help with making longer animations. It also helps render your animations or make them viewable faster when you export a video from your program to uh, then uh, mp4 format or whatever or a gif format to then put into uh, whatever social media app you're wanting to use it's going to be a lot faster on the uh, on a macbook to render out something that is more complex you could get more layers you could build things out in 3d and this could all still be 2d animation but you could put things into different three-dimensional planes and uh, the macbook should be able to handle all of that this next thing is not a pro, um, but just a characteristic of learning to animate on a MacBook is the learning curve. I mentioned that a learning curve on, I uh, can't write and speak at the same time, learning curve on the iPad is pretty, uh, pretty quick, but on a MacBook, um, depending on the, the software you're using, obviously, but for most software, After Effects, uh, learning to do cell animation or frame by frame hand drawn animation in Photoshop or Adobe Animate, the learning curve is pretty steep, and you're going to be in um, you're going to be Google searching a lot. You're going to be on YouTube trying to find out uh, how to do specific things, and obviously they're more robust. They're advanced tools. You're going to be able to use them to do a lot of things, and you're never going to be able to max out your capabilities. However, you're going to spend a lot of time learning. That is just a characteristic of the MacBook. I'm not exactly sure how to write this, but it requires more uh, to get into um, cell animation. Now, cell animation is frame by frame animation or uh, 2D traditional animation, hand drawn animation. And if you're going to do that on a MacBook, you're not going to just use your finger on the trackpad or a mouse to draw every frame you're going to want to get a tablet a wacom tablet and those can get expensive and so you're not only spending a couple thousand dollars for a nice macbook but then you're going to have to have other devices in order to make it possible to even do traditional 2d animation which then brings us to the next attribute and i know i was talking about pros and cons um, but we're kind of getting into the cons here that the macbook is expensive for a good macbook you're going to be spending it at least um, $1,500, probably $2,000. I know my first MacBook Pro that I got, I got a 15 inch MacBook Pro back in 2014. I spent $3,000 just for a MacBook Pro. You Obviously you can get the cheaper ones, but you might find that things are lagging a little bit slower or the After Effects, Adobe After Effects doesn't function as, as well on um, one of the cheaper MacBooks. This is definitely a Pro, but the MacBook uses Adobe After Effects, Photoshop, Animate, or in the past it was called Flash, Illustrator. It has all these Adobe programs, and these are industry standards. Um, if you're ever wanting to get a job in a studio, uh, they're going to be using all of these programs. Now, they are starting to uh, use things like Procreate uh, apps that are on the iPad more often. I know there's a couple projects that buck uh, one of the best studios, animation studios in the, in the world. Some of the projects that they have done recently have utilized the iPad and Procreate, and they've brought on some artists that are um, amazing iPad animators to work on projects. But for the most part, 
If you're wanting to work in a studio, they have a pipeline, they have a workflow, and in order to slot yourself into that, you're gonna wanna know After Effects, Photoshop, Adobe Animate, Flash, or, or even Toon Boom, I think by Harmony for uh, cell animation. Last thing I'm gonna write that I've already mentioned is that a MacBook is going to be better for long form, long form animation. So these apps like Adobe After Effects are just built so much better um, for handling uh, larger files and longer files. And so you're definitely gonna find that if you're wanting to do long form video that you're gonna have a better uh, time editing those things together on a MacBook. Now you can definitely do that on an iPad. The iPad has a great video editor called LumaFusion, which is a cheap app for less than $30. You can have a great video editor, but for the most part, the MacBook will be better uh, for long form video content. Now, here's where I want to clarify again. We're comparing things, but you know, it's hard to be so binary with decisions like this. So, you really have to think through some of the attributes of getting an iPad versus a MacBook and think is that a pro for me or is that a con for me? Am I going to want portability? more than I care about processing power. If that's the case, then you would definitely want to go with an iPad and learning there um, versus getting a MacBook. Now, one of the things that we can't really compare is what do you have access to? Do you already have access to a MacBook? And if you do, then you should definitely use your MacBook to just jump into animation, download Photoshop and start trying frame by frame animation in Photoshop. Or if you have access to Adobe After Effects, jump in and try animating. If you're going to be getting a brand new device, uh, you might need to look at some of these characteristics and think whether one is better than the other. But if you already have access to one, jump in and try it. If someone has an iPad with an Apple Pencil, then you should definitely pay $10 to get um, get Procreate and start using uh, Procreate to try little uh, frame by frame animations. Next scenario that I would ask is, are you new to animation entirely? Do you have zero um, understanding of how any of these kind of uh, programs work like Adobe After Effects? Uh, if that's the case, you should definitely go with a cheaper option like the iPad where you can jump in um, with a smaller learning curve and learn simple frame by frame animation. And I'm sure you're gonna have a better experience than paying thousands of dollars for a MacBook when you also need to get the programs and you're not even sure what kind of animation you might be wanting to do. The next scenario is, are you already a pretty good illustrator? Do you draw already? Maybe you've been using the iPad for a long time already and you're illustrating in Procreate. There's a lot of illustrators that are just so amazing at Procreate. And if that's the case, and you're already using the iPad, then I definitely recommend trying to use um, the Animation Assist timeline in Procreate and doing frame by frame animation or cell animation. And you could start really small and you could add little bits of animation, little small movements or a little bit of texture to your illustrations that you're already doing. Start small and then grow from there. And then maybe if what you're trying to do isn't possible, then start considering a MacBook. I already mentioned this uh, when we talked about After Effects, Photoshop, and Animate, but if you're planning on working in a professional studio someday, maybe you're in university for animation, um, in which case this whole video might be too much of a, of a beginner video for you. But if that's the case, then you definitely should at least have a MacBook. Having said that, I know so many who are professional animators, know After Effects, Photoshop, and these other bigger programs, but still use their iPads because of the experience, the portability, and the tactile nature, and how organic it is to be able to just hop on the couch, open up your iPad, and start drawing. And that experience hasn't been available for animation in the past. Like I said, you used to have to just slide into your desk and sit at a desk with your mouse and keyboard and maybe your Wacom tablet. And it's just such a bulky experience to use a MacBook. But if you're working in a studio, you might have that all set up for you. And then all you have to do is sit down and you're ready to go. But like I said, I do know um, for me personally, I've been using the MacBook for five plus years animating. And now I'm almost doing 80% of my animations on the iPad, a lot of times just because it's more fun and it's easier for me to pick up and put down. I can do 15 minutes of animation versus sometimes 
10 to 15 minutes just setting up my space or opening the programs to get started with animation on the uh, on the MacBook. To go along with that, obviously if you're working in a pipeline, um, in an office, in a studio, you're gonna wanna use the software that they're using. But on the flip side, whether you're a freelance illustrator and you're just working uh, by yourself or you're doing this as a hobby and you're by yourself, you don't need to hand off files to other people, then the iPad might be a great option for you because of the fact that you can just focus on your own experience with, uh, with animation. A couple of last questions. If you have a tight budget, go with the iPad and try out animation on the iPad. That's an easy answer. If you're specifically interested in cell animation, also called traditional animation, which is that frame by frame animation technique, a lot like what you did with flipbooks, get an iPad and start out with that. See if you can max out your capabilities on the iPad and then consider using a MacBook, which you might already have or have access to. The last scenario that you need to consider is, are you only interested in 2D animation. Most of the things that I focus on is 2D animation, and that's part of the reason why I'm using the iPad for, you know, 80% of my time right now, um, because I don't do a lot of 3D animation. I have a PC, and I do dabble in Blender and Cinema 4D, but for the most part, I'm just doing 2D animation. I love to draw, and I love the frame-by-frame -frame technique of cell animation because of how uh, how much life and texture that um, method of animation has. And so if you're specifically looking at 2D animation, get, a, get an iPad. But if you're interested in 3D animation or even 3D modeling and some of these bigger programs, again, I, I mentioned that the MacBook is just so much more robust and it has more advanced tools. And so if that is um, in your sights, then maybe you should get a MacBook, especially if you're going into university and that's your plans is you're wanting to do 3D animation. All right, I hope that made sense. Again, I wanna clarify that the iPad is not better than the MacBook. I mean, technically, it is definitely not a better machine than the MacBook, but for you and your situation, the kind of animation you're wanting to get into, the iPad might be the, the better choice. And even if you've been animating for a long time, you might be like me, where you're just finding that animation is becoming less fun and uh, more clunky and just harder to deal with um, doing animation after effects on a MacBook. So you should definitely consider an iPad for animation, maybe even doing it in tandem with your workflow in after effects. I apologize that there's not one answer to this question. Should you get an iPad or a MacBook? So if something wasn't clear or you have any further questions, leave a comment down below. I'll be sure to answer any questions that you have. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Peace.